Hello, I'm Simon from uh, the Food Teachers Centre. I project manage the Fish in School Hero program along with Louise Davis. Okay, so we're here today working with the British Nutrition Foundation and we're looking at the classifications of fish. So I've got a selection of fish in front of me here and I'm gonna talk you through the different fish. Um, so if you look at the classifications, we've got uh, white fish, round and flat. We've got oily fish, yeah, so that's a round fish there. We have mollusks, we have crustacea, and we have cephalopods. So if we start off with the white round fish, we have hake here. Hakes are really sustainable and becoming more and more popular. It's quite a meaty fish, takes on a lot of robust flavors. So we uh, can ask for that in our fishmonger. You can buy it whole, you can buy it fillets, you can buy it in steaks all chopped up there. Or you can buy this yourself and fill it up all the way down there. So however you want to do it, pop along to your fishmonger and they can actually do it for you or you can take the whole fish home. So we've got the white round fish here, starting with the hake, and then we have the gurnard. Okay, the gurnard again is uh, underutilized fish in the UK. It's getting more and more popular now. Uh, some of the uh, nice restaurants, uh, the five stars, are taking that gurnard and using it in their dishes. It, it's been used on TV and cooking shows more and more. Years ago, Fishmen used to catch it and throw it back overboard or give it to the lobstermen or the crab men and they used to use it in their pots you know, to track uh, as bait basically. But we're using more and more of it, which is fantastic because we're using those underutilized sustainable fish. Now we're going on to the flat fish. We have a place here. So the place has two sides. It has the spotty side that I call it with the bright orange spots there. So that's how you can tell it's a place and it has the white side as well, okay? We have another underutilized species here and it's the megram, also known as Cornish sole, okay? So it's part of the sole family. It is uh, inexpensive fish, so it's a lot cheaper to buy then uh, some of the other sole members, yeah, so the other family members such as the lemon sole, the Dover sole, okay, so have a look at using some of these under, underutilized bountiful species. Now I'm gonna move on to the mollusks. So we have some lovely rope grown mussels here. These are so sustainable and good for the environment as well. They capture a lot of carbon Okay, so they capture all that carbon and store it in the shell. Being rope grown, they're filter feeders, so as the seawater goes through, they take out all the nutrients from the seawater and use that to grow some fabulous meat. Now you can tell if the mussel is alive, it should be open, yeah, if it's left at rest, and if you tap it, yeah, the mussel should close up. So you can see that I've disturbed it and it's clammed up there, okay? So I know that that mussel is good to cook and good to eat. If it doesn't close or if you've got any cracks in the shell, yeah, broken bits, because in transportation they sometimes break, then you just need to get rid of them. Okay, so that's one mollusk. We have <coughs> another here, which is a scallop. This is a king scallop. Okay, they are quite expensive scallops, so you don't have to use a lot of them, okay? Two, maybe three is good enough for a starter portion, and then um, you can put lots of different other ingredients with it. P puree is a classic to go with that, a little bit of crispy bacon, and they cook in minutes, okay? Two minutes each side, leave them to rest in a really hot pan, sear them, turn them over, and they're ready. Just leave them to rest for 30 seconds and then plate up. Really simple and delicious. Okay. Okay, so here we have a Pacific oyster. Okay, it's a mollusk as well. They are quite difficult to open, so you need a special knife. Often than not, the fishmonger will wear a glove on, on the hand that they're gonna place the oyster in, and we get a special knife with a guard in. Put it into the hinge 
here. Okay, just loosen that hinge and then we'll take the top of the oyster off. And you're left with the sweet meat and a little bit of um, water in there, some juices. You can eat them raw. I like them raw with a bit of lemon, a little bit of Tabasco, or you can grill them and they take 30 to 45 seconds to cook the meat in there. You don't want to take it too far or so it gets tough and it's not pleasant to eat. So just to recap there, we've got the round whitefish, the gurnard, the hake, we've got the white flatfish, the megram, the place, we've got the mollusks, okay, so we've got the lovely mussels, rogue grown mussels, we've got the scallops, we've got the oysters. Now we're going to move on to the crustacea. Okay, the crustacea here, what I have is some spider crab legs, okay? Now the spider crab, we have hundreds of thousands of them around our coastline. It's a really underutilized species. Okay, so if you can imagine a spider's body, the carapace, and then the legs coming off, we just eat the legs, okay? There's nothing much in the carapace, in the body bit. So what we do is we cook it and then take the legs off and we're left with this beautiful uh, meat. Down in Cornwall, they're rebranding the spider crab as the king crab. So if you've seen the deadliest catch on TV, okay, they, with the Alaskan king crab, it's similar, it's a lot smaller, okay? But it's an underutilized species and we need to eat more of it. Some lovely sweet meat in these legs. Okay, so to finish off, what we have here is one of the cephalopods. This is a squid, okay? And this is caught on a jig hand lining, so it's really sustainable. We have lots and lots of this around our coastline. Of the cephalopods that we have would be uh, octopus, yeah, and cuttlefish. So cuttlefish and squid, very, very similar eating, okay? You have to take all the skin off, take the head off. We can eat the tentacles as well. You have to be careful because there's a beak inside there that's quite sharp. These eat small crabs, small juvenile fish. So often when you're actually preparing the squid, you can see what they've had for their last meal because often than not, it's not digested and it's in the main body. Okay, so you can see here all the different classifications of fish and shellfish that we have in the UK. There are a lot more different species. We've just got a small selection here for you to see.